What does his text mean? So frustrating. Maybe he's just not that into me. No, she really likes I've me. always been bad How at flirting. How can I get her attention? I'm ready for marriage. I just want somebody to share my life. Is this a relationship going anywhere? Modern love made simple. This is Dates and Mates with Damona Hoffman. Hey, 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 lovers, welcome to Dates and Mates. This is the place where we are going to demystify modern love for you. We are broadcasting live from Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood, and we are live streaming on Facebook at Demona Hoffman. So hello to all of our friends there, and uh, hello to all of you listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you love your podcasts. We love to have you listening, and we love to hear your questions and which segments you love from the show. Today, we are going to get down and dirty into motherhood and having having a relationship and having it all when you have kids. Joining me in a little bit will be Paulina Lopez. She is from the Super Mamas podcast, which is a fantastic look at what it's really like being a mom today. And I'm so excited that she will be uh, discussing her thoughts on Super Mamahood in just a minute. But first, I want to introduce you to my guest co-host for today. Rhonda Richards-Smith is back. Hi. Hello, Rhonda. Um, Let me tell you a little bit about her in case you missed her last appearance on the show. She's an award-winning psychotherapist and relationship expert. She's been featured in Us Weekly, The Huffington Post, Bravo, Ebony Magazine, Teen Vogue, Glamour, so many places. In 2016, she was inducted into the inaugural Women of Worth class for her leadership in the mental health and relationships field. And she has a Los Angeles-based company called Worthy Women, where she helps women with just the things we're going to be discussing today. So thanks for being here, Rhonda. Thank you. And we are going to hit the headlines. You know, we're always going to do the headlines. We'll be talking about The scary reason why STDs are on the rise. And is hashtag, is it hashtag me too soon to welcome shamed comedians like Aziz Ansari back to the stage? Plus, do you know that your relationship standards actually change when you're coupled up? We'll tell you how in just a moment. And then we'll be answering your questions, including, is it okay for your husband to DM an Instagram model? And should you hang out with your ex again if he's joining the Navy and you may not ever see him again? We'll tell you the answers to that in Technically Dating. And it's Dates and Mates season six. We're like, we're we're going fast and furious here. So if you love the show, you got to subscribe, y'all. And leave us a review. Tell us which episode or segment is your favorite. And breaking news, ding, 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 I'm going to start a private group call for the listeners of Dates and Mates only. So to get the login info for that, you have to become part of my community. You have to be one of the lovers. You could do this at datesandmates.com. You can pick your free e-course, either the Texting Ten Commandments or the Relationship Boot Camp. I, I don't have to tell you which one. You pick the one that uh, fits your relationship status. Just scroll down to the bottom of the page at datesandmates.com and pick your e-course, and then you'll get an invite to that call soon. All right, producer Thomas. I'm getting teary-eyed over here because you've been with the show for a year and three quarters, and this is your last show. Can we give you a round of applause for being so, so great on Dates and Mates? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, um, are, are you gonna, you wanna dish with us? Sure, let's do it. Okay, I'm not sure I can hear you all that well. Yeah. Can you hear me better now? Oh yeah, okay, that's right, much better. Back, back on okay, so okay. all the things that you were saying about how much you, you love being you on love, the show. There is lost to time. It's lost <laughs> to the sands of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very sad to leave. Thank you for welcoming me with such open arms. I've uh, had a great time here, and you're a wonderful boss. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, you're welcome back <laughs> thank anytime. You. Yeah. All right, let's dish. D's dating dish. Rhonda, yes. dating apps are to blame no. for the rise in STDs. She says no. no. New York Post <laughs> says yes. <laughs> Because there has been this crazy rash. Well, I said rash, don't but say don't rash. say rash. Well, a rash of rashes <laughs> <laughs> that um, is it's taken New York by storm. And they believe that Tinder and Bumble are to blame. 
as well as the hotter weather around the globe, <laughs> yeah. because I thought that was a weird statistic to work into that. <laughs> to that I didn't study. know that <laughs> hot weather correlates to more sexual activity. I would kind of like, think it would be less. It's like, uh, yeah. It's I would not, think it would be the cooler weather, yeah. right? It's not, sometimes it's up. not so mm-hmm. comfortable. Get, yeah. You know, it's it, uh, I don't, another I, person's body heat gets a little unc- it gets a little sweaty. I'll tell you, <laughs> producer Thomas, yeah. when I was single uh, back in the Middle Ages. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say that summer summer was a time for more play. And I guess that's what's happening with dating apps. Be- it's not it's not when people are looking for that serious relationship. Yeah. It's um it's a time when people are just ready to mingle and stay single. So you you said no. Rhonda no. said no from from jump. No. no you don't think it's no. it's dating apps. No, no. I think we have to move away from blaming technology for like our decisions it's you know it's a tool it's meant to be a tool more than anything um, and I think the apps are awesome because you really have access to multiple people but just because you have access um, you still need to be careful about who you're interacting with and as a responsible adult you have to make sure that you're getting tested you want to be sure that your partner is getting tested and that you know their status it's not up to the dating app to set that up for you yes agreed however Th- statistically speaking, because of the dating apps, there are more people who are dating. Yes. And like you said, they have access yes. to more partners in a way where before, like if you were maybe you were divorced and your social circle was set, you weren't going out on dates. But now if we even look at the numbers, particularly for people over 50, that's where that's where STDs are rising at alarming rates. Oh yeah, STDs are rampant, partic- particularly in like nursing homes. They're rampant for older adults. STDs are really on the rise for older adults. For I sure. just started, and that's not necessarily a new statistic. No, but there is a correlation in the rise of of over fifty STIs yeah. and dating apps reaching that that group. But I just started to wonder. Do people over 50 use the dating apps in like these nursing homes? Like, are they swiping and they're like, <laughs> they they may, they may. I I like, like, my aid will pick up your aid. Right. Yes, right. yes. Yeah. Wow. Meet me for Jello. Yep. Downstairs. Meet me for Jello. That sounds pretty sexy. You know, I, I, <laughs> Jello's a refreshing yeah. treat in the hot summer <laughs> and sun. I, exactly. <laughs> I know. Okay. Well, hey, Rhonda Richard Smith says no. <laughs> yeah. Has, yeah. Says no to the don't, don't believe the hype. But. Nope. I do want to reiterate what you said about being safe. Yeah. Like, don't don't hate the play at, hey, don't hate the dating app. <laughs> it's just it's just a tool. It's, it's just a just tool, but a you tool. have to be responsible yep. and take responsibility for your own sexual. Yep, health. absolutely. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and lecture you guys. You know, <laughs> you're all grown ups. Hopefully, you're all grown ups listening Hopefully. to the show. Speaking of people being grown ups and being able to make their own sexual decisions. A little while ago on Dates and Mates, we covered Aziz Ansari and how he got caught up in the Me Too movement. So I guess people are looking at Aziz's actions as lesser than, say, Louis C.K., who uh, I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to say um, a word that might make some of you uncomfortable, Ooh. who masturbated in front of women. But Aziz just went out on a bad date that was, I, I, I don't have to tell you guys, I mean, it was blasted all over the news. And basically, he was super persistent after this woman was sending some mixed signals, but basically letting him know that she did not want to have sex with him. Uh, so now he's back to stand up. He got, I guess he As got well benched. As well I think. Well, hold on, I'm okay. getting okay. to okay. it. <laughs> 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 Am I going too slow? Uh, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> He, yeah, he's back to stand up. It so he got put in the in the pen for like mm-hmm. six six months or yeah. so, but he came back to stand up and has not addressed the story at all. But he's talking about dating, and as opposed to Louis C.K., who also returned to stand up this week, and like full disclosure, I'm a big Louis C.K. fan, and I ha- I have been for a long time. The weird thing is that in his stand-up, he has always talked about things like masturbating in front of girls and all these things. I think because it was so public, it was sort of like Donald Trump, because it's so public, we're like, well, he wouldn't actually be doing it, because that's really weird that he would just say that on a stage, because that's, who does that? Who does (laughs) that? That's crazy. It turns out he was doing it, 
And I think of all the Me Too people, he had the most um, honest and thoughtful apology letter. And he is actually addressing it in his stand-up. Mm. So, okay, here's the question. Now, now that I've given you the whole the context, context. Yes. Rhonda, do you think that Aziz has a responsibility to address what happened in his stand-up? Or should he just move forward? And do you think dating should be off limits as a topic for him, knowing what his dating history really is? You know, for comedians, if you're really going to be a successful comedian, nothing can really be off the table. Um, it may have just been too soon to bring it up, but I don't think it's fair to say that he can't talk about dating or relationships. I mean, that's like the crux of so many different comedic acts is you know, yeah. what's going on with their partners, what's going on in the dating life, he in the wrote bedroom. a very good book, actually, on the topic, Modern Romance. If yeah. you haven't read it, it's great. Um, where, you know, he he actually did, he partnered with a researcher and they, they researched what how dating apps have impacted uh, people's dating experiences. So um, here's the next question then. Do you think that do you think that he sh or Louis C.K. should you said maybe it's too soon and a lot of people are using this hashtag me too soon. Do you think <laughs> do you think oh, it wow. is too soon for him to return to the stage? Do you think he should have been on a timeout longer? And do you put Louis C.K. in a different category than Aziz Ansari? I think I definitely put them into two different categories. I mean, it sounded like the story with Aziz was more um, kind of like boiled down to miscommunication, I think. And when we're in dating and we're in the early stages of dating, communication, I think, is sometimes really tricky. And maybe hinting that something isn't comfortable is really different than letting somebody know and setting your boundaries clearly and saying, hey, I need you to stop. Not comfortable. Date over. Whatever it may be. Um, so it sounds like sound wait, 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 wait. Before you move on, though, mm -hmm. we have to take into account the fact that he's a celebrity. Like, Absolutely, that, that could be intimidating for Absolutely. her. Absolutely, or she could have been like, "This could make a great story." It could be, and it 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 could be very intimidating. But my thought is, if you're going to go out with a celebrity, if you know that the person is a celebrity, so it's not a blind date, and if you know that you're going out with them, you kind of need to have your that talk with yourself prior. Like, and I'd say that for like any date, if you're going to go on a date kind of have some idea of what your boundaries are up front versus waiting in the moment and then trying to negotiate in your head, okay, how far am I going to take this? What am I going to do? Should I say this? Should, how am I going to get out of this? You should plan all of that in advance so that you're not kind of tripped up in the moment trying to figure out how are you going to say that you're uncomfortable or how are you going to end the date early if you need to. That's great advice. And it's something that I, I've told my clients as well. Like my husband calls it making a decision about making a decision. Yes. If you already... <laughs> decided I'm not having sex with this guy tonight and that's that's not a good decision then two drinks later it's still not a good decision because you already made a decision yep. about making, yep. making a decision it's planning in advance <laughs> planning in advance I, yep. I knew I think I said when we were talked about Louis CK I was like he's not going to be on the bench for that long people are going to invite him back to stand up because he is so transparent and he does talk about what he learned um I I think it's okay for Aziz to come back, but I, I do think that he needs to at least address what's happened, especially if he's going to be talking about dating. I agree. I agree with that. All right. Well, if he were, if he was to get into a relationship with some woman after this point, I don't know how that would be possible. Perhaps his relationship standards would change after he's dated them. <laughs> Bustle had a new article. You like my transition? I love the transition. That's a solid transition. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bustle had a new article that that cited a study proving that your expectations change before and after you enter into a relationship. So they gave 400 people the survey about their ideal partner and how their current partner stacks up. And then six months later, they, they, they talked to those who were single and had these ideal expectations and that, that had coupled up since then and found that their their expectations changed. And uh, those who were in a relationship at first ranked their current, their partner closer to their ideal than those who started single. Did, now, you're married, Rhonda. I am. Do you feel like your, your standards have changed since you've been with your husband? Or do you feel like, um, what, what do you think of this study? 
No, I mean, I don't think my standards have changed, but I think it's interesting because, I mean, ideally, as people, we're always growing, right? We're always growing, we're always learning more about ourselves, more about what we want. And I think it's tricky sometimes when you're starting out because you can't have an ideal of exactly, you know, my ideal husband, this is what he's going to look like, this is going to be his job, this is where we're going to live. Um, Can and I tell you something super reality weird? Reality sets in and it's... I did that. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really? Like yeah. he literally has the look really? he has the profession yeah. and we live on a street that i used to drive up visualize. and say one day <laughs> we're gonna live on this street and it's creepy That's so your rare. standards have not changed seth met all of them right yeah. now now my standards <laughs> right. have gotten higher yes. and he just has to keep raising the bar you have to adjust to be no uh but what i will say is what i find attractive because you know i'm married i'm not dead like <laughs> what i <laughs> i used to be really into like guys with tats and the bad boy uh, bad boys you know like you have piercings and tats and uh, come from a broken home sign you <laughs> up <laughs> I, can't, I can't get enough of you yeah. <laughs> but you know seth is the opposite of that he's he hates tattoos he's super clean cut he comes from a great home uh, his parents are on the show They've been married for 50 years. And so now I find like I'm more attracted to the clean cut look. And when like it was his birthday yesterday, actually. Happy oh, birthday, Seth. Happy birthday. Um, when I came home and he was like, you know, fresh haircut, fresh shower, freshly shaven, his button down shirt tucked in with a belt. I was like, dang, <laughs> all right, I'm going out with him yes, tonight. Yes, <laughs> When love like it. before that was not that was not the type that I was generally attracted to, but I did this thing called Operation Date Nice Guys and said, I need to, I need, my ideal partner actually needs to be more like this guy. And so that's that's where we ended wow. up. Wow. But, you know, sometimes it, it takes that distance to, to step away and say, okay, this is what I'm always dating, but this is an ideal life partner. Well, and that's the you. thing, because right. you can have an idea for what your ideal mate will be long term, but then sometimes you get it and you go, oh, no, this is not. This is not what I thought it would be. Sometimes we mm. get exactly what it is that we're looking for, <laughs> and then we realize, okay, I want the exact opposite of that. So that can happen sometimes, too. It changes. It does changes change. changes over time. Yes, yes. Well, this is an interesting study. But emotional so. emotional support, I mean, that's sexy. You know, when I feel supported, <laughs> emotional, that's, 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 you know, over time you build that and you grow and... Right. It's a good thing. Emotional and also like support around yeah. the house. Like we we yes. cited a study a couple episodes ago that when men do the dishes, mm -hmm. whew, yeah, yeah. there's something to be said. There's All something right. to be said. For well, it. we're going to tell the guys listening how they can keep it sexy, keep it sexy for the ladies. Yeah. And the ladies who are listening who are mamas will tell you how you can be a super mama and have it all and also stay sexy at home. Uh, so, I'm going to take a little break. When I come back, our guest, Paulina Lopez, is going to talk to us about how to do all of that or how not to do it. She's already shaking her head before we've started. It's going to be a live one. Stay tuned. Have you heard of FabFitFun? If you haven't, let me get you up to speed, okay? It's a seasonal box with all of the fitness, beauty, fashion, and lifestyle products that are tailored just for you. It's a custom curated box with over $200 worth of full-sized items that you get for only $49.99. And with the code Dates and Mates, your first box will be discounted an additional $10. I have a video of me opening my fall box on my Facebook page at Damona Hoffman if you want to sneak peek on everything inside. And each week, I am highlighting different items in the fall box. So next up, we have the Skin & Co's Blue & Capri Shower Gel. Here we go. And the Grown Alchemist Hydro Repair Day Cream. So I'll tell you first about the shower gel. I spent my honeymoon in Italy, and my time on the island of Capri was one of my fa faves. And the smell of the shower gel, it just took me back. It's herbaceous, and it's gentle. And actually, it's a great unisex shower gel if you're looking for one that you and your man can use together because of all those herby flavors and sage and rose and autumn blossom you got to get it and then there's the grown alchemist hydro repair day cream and you guys this moisturizer is amazing but i'll tell you a little goes a long way so this tube here is probably going to last me for half a year and also even you put it on your face but i get ashy elbows too so i also slathered a little bit on there and 
It's keeping me keeping me all silky smooth. Okay, so I'll stop talking now so you can go over to fabfitfun.com and check it out. And remember to use the secret code dates and mates to get $10 off your first box. And you guys, this fall box is going to sell out. It's, it will sell out. So get yours before it does. You can click the link in the show notes or go to fabfitfun.com and input the code dates and mates and get $10 off. Hey, and also let them know that I sent you. Next week, I'll feature two new items. So stay tuned for more dates and mates and subscribe so you'll get that episode. Welcome back to Dates and Mates. I'm so excited to finally have this guest in studio with, with me today, Paulina Lopez. She's from the Super Mamas podcast. But it's not just a podcast, you guys. It's an event series. It's an online community that connects, empowers, and supports women through the ups and downs of motherhood. I think many of us know what that's about. <laughs> it was co-founded by Paulina and her sister, Bricia. And Paulina is an entrepreneur a speaker and an advocate for the Latina community. And she also is like a major business owner. She has so many things going on. Like, I cannot wait to interview this lady, you all. Please give big smooches to Paulina Lopez. Hi, thank you for having me. I've learned so much already. Have you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How have your expectations changed since you've been married? Yeah. Well, you know, my it's well, my husband and I met when we were like 21. So yes, a lot. You know, we were kids. And uh, I would say that we've grown up together. So our marriage has gone through various phases. And yeah, I think we both have changed and we both have changed our expectations, but it's just like like a tune up every so often mm -hmm. and just regrouping and seeing what we, what we want, what we need, where we are in our lives. And, you know, I've been so out of the ga uh, dating game for such a long time. Like I, it's so unknown to me. I have a, younger sister and I live vicariously through her <laughs> so that's me <laughs> well that's not all that's not at all to you there's so much more so let, let's just run down the list of things that Paulina has on her plate oh god she <laughs> runs a successful business that includes one of the top Oaxacan restaurants in LA probably the top I if would we can say in the United States but hey. Hey. in the United States good. yeah um you you also have a line of food and yes. beverage products. So yeah, so we have the Galicata restaurant, uh, which is a James Beard Award um, winner. Um, Everyone should go. Everyone I should need to go. go. Oh, yes, wow. please. Um, Koreatown. I love Molly. Com. <laughs> um, also, we have an online store where we sell all, a lot of our products, and we ship nationwide. And we have a Michelada mix, uh, which is a um, kind of like a spicy beer cocktail, and you can find it in retail. We also sell it online, and um, we, my sister and I, once we became mothers, we decided to start this little pro side project that has now turned into this amazing community uh, of Super Mamas, which is a podcast. Okay. How the heck do you do it all? Because the, the thing that you <laughs> forgot to mention is that you also have three kids. I have three girls. In addition to your... To your husband. Yeah, and three girls. I have three girls. Oh, so yeah, I have two. <laughs> I have two girls, yeah. Well, I have one boy, and he's, like, basically, <laughs> like, two girls three put times, together. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> how do you do it all? And you were shaking your head earlier, like, <laughs> like how can you have it all? And you're shaking your head, like, that's not possible. But you're doing it. You're I, living I it. I try. But, you know, I get this question a lot. My sister and I get this question a lot of, like, how do we do it all? And the truth is, like, I don't. I, I don't do it all myself. I have an amazing support system around me. And I think that's one of the things that we always try to advocate on the show. You know, um, you have to surround yourself by a community and you have to grow your sister tribe or your mother tribe because it is so important. I couldn't do anything without first and foremost my husband because you know he's my partner uh but my siblings um my team at, at, at the restaurant i have an amazing babysitter schools friends like i have to learn to delegate a lot of things and um i think what happens what tends to happen is that we leave ourselves at the end i think we give out so much and that's the thing that i work through every day because yeah. i take care of everybody else but i always 
or most times I forget to take care of myself. But yeah, I, I have a, an amazing just group of people around me and I just, I had to learn to ask for help, you mm -hmm. know, and just to really accept the fact that I'm not going to be able to do it all and I'm going to be good at some things and bad at some things every day. Like some days work is going to suffer and some days my kids are might be, you know, suffering from my attention or I have to step away for a few days. But um, it's just like a balancing act and just trying to really ask for help that's mm -hmm. what i would say let's talk about that support system of yours a little bit more i was listening to a recent episode in which you took your sister's son yes and <laughs> you you babysat him so that they could have a vacation yeah, yeah. like for four oh, days oh my god <laughs> i know awesome. i had four kids for four days and you know i love babies like i have baby fear every every day and people are at, keep asking me you're going to have more babies i'm like i don't know you know I, I say so i said i'm gonna take this little time to experiment and see if i if there's any like piece of me in there that wants to have more babies i was like no no <laughs> i was like no more it was exhausting it was so much but, but you I, do like extra you didn't just sit them down in front no. of the tv <laughs> and like well watch this and i'll check on no on you, I, I just, you like, took him to the beach I took like, him to the beach playground i took him to a birthday party i just i you have to keep them busy and get yeah. them tired so that <laughs> at the end of the day they're like easier to go to bed mm -hmm. but i just feel like i have i have amazing memories of summer and my childhood I, I grew up in Mexico and life is very different in Mexico you know you're you live in you can actually go out in the streets and play and I have amazing memories of my childhood so I it's important for me to create those kind of memories for my children and also for my nephew you know I want him to say I want to go to my tia's house I want to go play or I remember when I was a little kid my tia used to take me here and there like I want to be that aunt I mm -hmm. always knew that I wanted to be a mom ever since I can remember and um but I did grow up in Mexico, and I have this telenovela mentality of what motherhood was, <laughs> right? Break that down for us. Well, you know, it's like everything's perfect, and your baby's always clean, and you're always looking <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> and, you know, your baby never cries, and you feed them. And it's, it's this, like, really perfect, amazing mentality like that we grew up as Mexicans. Um, it's everything. Marriage, everything is just perfect, right? Um, and then when I had my baby... I, I realized that it wasn't that easy. I actually have gone through postpartum depression twice, and it's been really, really hard. And so motherhood is really not perfect. Motherhood is, motherhood is very imperfect. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, that's what we always want to communicate. And mm -hmm. I, that's the reason why we started the podcast, because we said, I think there's like this, expect, this very absurd expectation of what motherhood should be. And nobody's saying otherwise. And more us as Mexicans, like you're supposed to like have this baby, love this baby, be perfect, be a perfect mom, be a perfect wife, and like just do everything perfect, or otherwise there's something wrong with you. Mm. And so when I started talking about my depression, even my mom was like, that doesn't exist. Like I had four kids. There's something else going on with you. So I was like, yeah, there probably is something wrong with me. And through therapy, and until my sister had her baby, her first baby my second baby she was like oh my god I'm so sorry like, I get you it's hard and so I said we know we should we should really share our experiences because there is many people out there that might feel the same way as us and we need to let them know that it is okay it is okay to fail and it is okay to not ha not be perfect and also that there is more to you than being a mother after your mother uh, because I, we thought that it was an, uh, another very uh, important topic to talk about. Like, mm -hmm. just, you know, you can be a professional and have a job and do all these things that people think that we do. But, like, the truth of how it all goes down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. And your sister, she takes this uh, August trip with her husband so that they can keep their relationship fresh. What do you and your husband do to keep the passion alive with three kids? Oh, God. We have been together for 15 years, so we've done a lot of things. Uh, you know, uh, I feel that sex is very important, and I always try to, I, I'm very open about that, and I'm like, you know, my best friend always told me the more you do it, the more you do it. So <laughs> uh, um, so I, I feel like, you know, like I said, we have to keep, we've gone through stages of, we had a baby. My baby's going to be a year and a few months and like a few weeks. 
And so for the first, like, I don't know, six months or something, I was like, don't even look at me. Like, right? I don't, I don't want to yeah. know nothing about Been you. Been there, right? You, you too, know? Rhonda? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, like, I was like, I don't, I, I'm done. Like, I'm not me right now. My body's not mine. But I'm finally feeling like I'm back. And so we've been, you know, trying uh, new things. And we always take at least two trips during the year to alone. We always uh, try to take uh, out-of-town trips without the kids far, far, far. So nobody bothers us. <laughs> um, and we try to do date night at least once every other week. That's great. We try to go to the movies, um, eat. We eat a lot. We love eating. Um, we've done different things. We go bowling, whatever. We try to do it. But we are really busy as well, and sometimes she tries to do it. <laughs> yeah. I know. Enjoy sometimes I'm like a 14 year old boy <laughs> on the show. <laughs> so she said, do "But it. you know, like I like, last night I actually put my baby to sleep with the other two, and I was like, yes, okay, I think now we have some like a long time.' Yeah, so that's a big game changer. It is. It is it completely, and because I feel. You know, as a mother, sometimes you give so much of yourself to the kids that by the time you get to your husband, it's like, I'm all touched out. Like, yeah. I don't want to mm -hmm. be touched mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, you know, again, my best friend is such a, I'm going to say good influence on me on that aspect. And she says, never say no to your husband, ever. Like, never say no to him. And I was like, but what if I'm tired? And she's <laughs> like, no. Trust me, the more you do it, the more the you'll do, do it. it. <laughs> so there's it. definitely it. times <laughs> where I'm, like, really tired. I'm like... I'm just like I really want to go to sleep, but you could just like do. I just know. Do whatever, it's <laughs> just, fine. Just, just you know. do it. And but then he's like, "Well, that's not fun." And I'm like, "It's the best I got." But I right think now. like once you get into it, you get no, into it. No, I agree. The more you, you know do it, the more you do it. The more you do it, the more you do, the more totally you do it. And I always that's tell, totally I always tell true. girls that I'm like, "Yeah, you gotta just do it, girl." Yeah, you know, no, you cannot true. say no to your husband. I mean. I had a I had a I had a free pass because of the baby, but now it's like all well. It's like building a habit, stuff. right? You got to build a habit. habit, so you yeah. build a habit. You got to keep keep doing it. What's your date night routine, Rhonda? Um, you know, I'm lucky. I have a pretty good support system too, so we are able to do date nights. So we do date nights at least like a couple of times a month when we mm -hmm. can. We like going to movies. Um, we like going to dinner. We like shooting pool. Hmm. Um, sometimes we just go out for the day for a picnic and just, you know, kind of keep it during the day and keep it easy. And I have a friend that. down the street that will just book a babysitter, but sometimes they're just too busy to even make the plan. Aww. So a lot of times, like, I walk in our neighborhood and I'll see them just sitting in the car. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they're, like, all dressed and they're like, we don't know. The babysitter just came oh. and we don't know. We just have to drive away. Yeah. <laughs> like I've seen don't them multiple times. Yeah. They're like, we have no idea where that we're happens. going. We just have we to go. Because, you know, we're like, what if something happens? We can't go. But, you know, another thing that I do I have done is we actually book a hotel in the city. Yeah. And we just mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, stay a night somewhere in the city. It doesn't have to be, you know, people think date night or gain getaways. And they're like, oh, my God, I don't have money. But it's like you could literally just book uh, something, you know, within the vicinity and you feel like you're somewhere really far and that that space that different environment mm -hmm. really helps really helps right. boost and and i think that alone time is so important because sometimes you forget what you're like without kids because mm -hmm. you are a completely yeah. different person when you have your kids and you forget what is it that you fell in love with we used to go when we used to go to vegas uh, the first thing that we did was go on the New York, New York roller coaster and just like <laughs> yell together uh, because we have this theory that when you share adrenaline together, you fall in love. It's, so it's mm -hmm. not a theory. Yeah. It's science. It's yeah. So we <laughs> we do that. We try to do like either six flags or something mm -hmm. like that and just like yell and scream together. And then we come back super relaxed and just like. Super in love, I'm gonna I say. Love it. <laughs> so yeah, sweet. but you you do a lot of self care, and I know it's been like a journey for it you has. to get there. But this is something that I know you talk about a lot on Super Mama's podcast, and you you really create the community. You have the social that happens every year. You also now have vision board parties. So we have three different events now. Mm -hmm. We last weekend we had our first ever Mo Super Mama's night out. And it was just all moms, no kids. Uh, we had music, a DJ. We had a lunch, like a booze, uh, food. We had a panel. And we just had a night out, just a girl's night out. And and danced and cried and talked. And 
I, we were just cry. cry. <laughs> yeah, we did. I've been there. there was a lot there. of crying, and then there was a lot of like dancing, and then there was a lot of drinking, and there was a lot of crying again. That, I was gonna yeah, say, yeah, you yeah, drink yeah, it, yeah. then you're crying. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it, it was amazing uh, because a lot of us don't ever take the time to do that, or you know, that girlfriend time. Also, it's very important. And I um, think the guilt that comes into play sometimes oh too, right? You know the what? The guilt that people try oh yeah. to inflict on others for taking care of themselves oh yes. or taking time, you know, whether it's with their partner or it's with their friends. You have a lot of people out there who kind of like to inflict that guilt on other yeah. people, which makes it really tough, too. It's funny you say that. Our theme was mom guilt no more. Yes. Hashtag yeah. mom guilt no more. Good. Yeah. yeah, we gotta get rid of that. that I don't have any yeah. guilt. You I don't carried either. I, I, no, I, I carried did. a lot right after my daughter because I went right back to like a sixty hour a week mm-hmm. job. I'm sure you're like sixty yeah. hours. I would love <laughs> to work sixty hours <laughs> one <vacation>. week. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I, I went right back into it and I was the first one to leave the office, the last mm-hmm. one to get to daycare every day, and then yeah. I go home, put her to bed, start working again. Yeah. And I was just depleted and I felt like I didn't even know her. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of guilt, but I took I took some time off to really focus on getting to know her, doing those things, like you said, that made me feel like me again yeah. as well. Because mm-hmm. nobody wants a, a wife or a mom that's a robot. Yeah, you yeah. Wanna, mom has to be okay or that's for cranky. kids to be okay and yeah. for the partner to be okay. We have to be okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I got a Disney season pass. <laughs> and we, went, we literally went to Disneyland on a like a weekly basis, oh, so and so that was awesome. that is a magical year. Well, I think that's why. Yeah. Also, I, that's why we. I I always wanted to do something that I could include my kids in, mm-hmm. and that's the, another reason why I started the podcast because it's also around kids. Um, so I get to spend time with them. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about the vision board event because uh, I'm big into vision boards, but yes. tell me why you do it and why you've brought that to the Super Mamas community. My sisters and I have been doing vision boards for a long time. Every year we get together with our friends at the end of the year and we um, draw out our vision board. We just do cardboard and magazines and we each create our year, what, whatever we want for the year. And it's been a habit and a lot of the things that we have put our manifested through our vision board has come to life. Even the podcast, everything that has come with the podcast, like everything is just envision. So we we know the power that that manifesting your dreams has. When we t- when we thought about um, doing another event for our listeners, we're like we should totally do that because we always talk about um, you know empowerment and inspiration, and sometimes we don't really know what we want and we have to have a reminder. I have my vision board in my office, like right in front of where I work, and I look at it all the time. And it's either a reminder of all the things that I need to do, or also it's like an acknowledgement of the things that I've already achieved. And it makes me look at and say, okay, well, you're not that bad. You already learned to ride a bike. Or, you know, I put my house there for like two or three years, and that third year I got my house. And I was like, yes, finally I have a house. Or, you know, little things or big things. And it's very important to... You know, I I believe, we believe that as long as you manifest it, they come to life. And mm-hmm. it's important. And it's important to teach other people and teach our, our sisters or daughters that we can also create our dreams. Whatever it is that you want, you can just put it there. And it's not going to come to life by itself. You have to yeah. work for it. But it's a reminder. And every time you look at it, you're like, I know what I'm working for. I know where I'm going. And it, it, it's a direction. This past time when I had my baby, this last year, I was in, like I said, in a big depression. I didn't do a vision board. And for the first half of the year, I had no idea where I was going. I was lost. I felt helpless. And so I was like, I'm just going to pick up my last year's vision board because there was a lot of things that I didn't do because of the baby. And I picked it up and I put it up again. And I was like, oh, like it just reminded me of where I was going before the baby. And that has helped me in my recovery. And for me, it's also like I'm very visual. And a lot of people do vision boards on their through Pinterest, on their phones, however they want. But it's, it, it has to be in a place where you can actually look at it yeah. every day and remind yourself of your goals, your dreams, and to know that there's something better all the time. And it's awesome when you look back at your vision boards, oh, yeah. too, because you can look at what you were dreaming for and mm-hmm. you realize a lot of those things you already have. Yes. So you remember yes. the days when you dreamed of what you have now. Yeah. I love yes. it. Yeah. yeah. Moms need vision. Yeah. Mom need vision. Moms need dreams too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that have dreams for the kind of relationships that you you both have. So let's give people some advice in our technically dating segment. 
technically dating. And by the way, listeners, you can email me your questions, Demona at Demona Hoffman, or you could DM me. Don't send me Uh-oh. anything extra. <laughs> Just send me or your do, questions. Do so carefully. Carefully. At Demona Hoffman. A uh, listener named Dawn emailed to ask a question about dating apps. Okay, you ready? She says... I just really need to know if the threesome requests, actively bisexual males looking for understanding females, Fifty Shades of Grey thrill seekers, 20-somethings looking for cougars, and millionaires looking for crazy street girls are the norm, or if I'm just super lucky to get them in plentiful numbers in my feed. (laughs) LOL. Rhonda, you're a relationship expert. You went to Match.com headquarters with me. You know a lot about dating apps. What do you think? Is this something that is now becoming the norm? <laughs> well, here's the thing about dating apps, right? Date, dating apps are going to draw particular niche interests naturally, right? If you're looking for a particular type of person, you have this database basically of people and you can specify exactly what it is that you're looking for. So you are going to see some maybe interesting um, requests or interesting kind of thoughts on relationships. But I think the abs really open that up because you can be as specific as you want about exactly what you're looking for. So I've heard those stories many, many times. So I don't think she's alone. But I do think you see what you focus on. That's and true. Th- you know, when I was online dating, it was always like, I, yeah, I would get creeps and weirdos, <laughs> you know, sliding into my inbox. Yeah. But yeah. it was like, oh, delete, delete. Oh, look, here's this great guy named Seth. You know, yeah. so everyone's it, not going to be a good fit. Right. Everyone's not going to be a good fit on the dating apps. Definitely not. But there is something to be said for which dating your app, app you're on. Like if she's on the BDSM app, that explains a lot. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know. I mean, it it depends on which app you're on and also, it, sometimes it's the amount of effort people have to go through to be on the app. Like, I think Tinder is a great app to be on because it is sort of a catch-all, but you're going to get Everything. you're going to get a lot yeah. of weirdness, and that's when you swipe, swipe left yeah. and just keep it moving. And there's something for everyone, so if it's not for her, swipe, keep going. Yeah, there's yeah. some pe- there are some understanding yes. females that want that. Absolutely. Bisexual male. <laughs> yes. Do you have anything to add, Paulina? <laughs> Like I said, I've been out of the dating game for such a long time. I've never used an app. I don't, you know, I always wonder. I'm like, if I was single right now, I would be single for a long time. No, I, I think no I would idea. be too. I say that all the time. If <laughs> no, I were single now, I don't me. know. That's no, true. That is true. I, I don't know. I mean, there's weirdos even back when I was dating. So I'm sure you just have yeah, to They just have technology now. That's yeah. it. Filter them. And yeah, guest filter and them. Dawn, stay, stay positive. Don't look for the weirdos. Look for the good ones. Yeah. Maybe do a vision board on what you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. You'll start, yeah. Yeah. you'll start to see that more, and you'll train your mm-hmm. brain to focus on that rather than all Because these. if you're not clear on Ooh. what you're looking for, then that's how you get distracted. So it's true. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. This one. This one's up your alley, Paulina. Oh, God. Mm. Okay. This is from <laughs> a married lady. She's 32, and she said, I just saw my husband's DM conversations with Aye. an Instagram model. Mm. Now, here's what she says. They were flirty, <laughs> but I'd say innocent. Does he have a right to a, quote, private online life, or do I need to confront him now that I know? She was doing some Mm Insta-snooping. I think I'm going to tell you something. Like I said, I met my husband when we were really young, so I did a lot of snooping for a long time. (laughs) Um, And then I realized I was only hurting myself. Because whenever you want to find something, you will find something. Mm -hmm. Um, Even if it's just... like casual flirting or whatever maybe you you're taking it a very different context than what it actually is so i decided that i wouldn't do that anymore and you know my husband works in the michelada and he goes on a lot of parties and there's like a lot of like very good looking females and i wouldn't be able to sleep at night if i was always thinking that so i think it's just a matter of trust between you and your partner and i think we all have a right to privacy i don't I don't think he ever goes through my phone. I mean, there's nothing that he's going to find there other than work and mom stuff. But, <laughs> you know, it's, I don't know. I, 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 I personally stopped doing that. I did it for a long time. I'm not going to say I've never done it. And I was very, I was the very jealous type, like very jealous. But one day I said, you know, if he's going to leave, he's going to leave no matter what. 
So I decided to stop doing that. And um, mm -hmm. everything's at peace this, now. Can yeah. I just say, this is what I love about you and your sister and the Super Mamas podcast, <laughs> because this is how you talk on the show. Yeah. And you're... You're just 100% transparent. There's a lot of people that'd be like, well, I've never done that. Oh, I don't no. know how you could do it. <laughs> but like, that's what people get when they listen yeah. to your podcast. Girl, they I get the real I used to smell real. clothes before. Oh, I was just like- Smell clothes. Yeah, I was like, does it smell like alcohol? Yeah. Oh, no. no. Like, I was like, like what am I doing? Scent. Yeah, so that's I was just intense. like, no. I mean, we've been together for since I was 21. So we were like, mm -hmm. you know, in our 20s. And once we started having kids and everything, I was just like, you know, it is, that's why. The more you do it, the more you do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to worry so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but oh, I don't know if he should be like, should he be? If he's doing it in the DM, that also means that he's trying to get away with something, though, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and, well, I mean, it depends, too. I mean, it depends on what they've talked about. Have they talked about yeah. at all what they're doing online? Um, has she been open and transparent about what her expectations are? Like, I think maybe those are conversations you need to have. But to tell him not to DM someone and that I was snooping through your things, I mean, it, it, it's kind of so far gone at this point. Like, if she felt really strongly about it, it might be something that mm -hmm. she should have mentioned earlier um, up front. She should have said, by the way, just FYI, don't DM Instagram models? I well, feel like that's kind of a given. Like, no, right? well, well, I mean, Wait, I is, this, is this Instagram model even real? Well, that's the wow. other question. <laughs> you know right? what I mean? Like, is it really? Is it really, is it really an Instagram model? <laughs> I mean, maybe she has some level of comfort there because it's it may not actually be a real person versus like messaging someone right. that she knows. Uh, yeah, that's and it, I mean, it kind of depends on the content of the conversation too. So Flirty. Well, I mean, what is, flir what is what is what is that though? Look at this What's one. flirty <laughs> for me is different than what might be flirty for somebody else. I don't know. Maybe she should flip it and ask him, would you be mad mm -hmm. if I mm -hmm. messaged yep. a man on Instagram? Like, would that make you feel uncomfortable? And then he, if he a was model. like, no. Yeah. A male model. There's a male, male yeah. model. Would that make you feel weird? Yeah. And if he was like, no, then she'd say, well, <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you. Okay. This one comes to us from a young female. She's 19. She says, mm, is hanging out with my ex after it's been a year, over a year of seeing each other, a bad idea? So I think she's trying to say they've broken up. It's been over a year since they've seen each other. But he leaves for the Navy in September, and this is the last chance I'll get to see him. Should I? Maybe it'll help me feel better. I don't know. Should she see her ex? She may never see him again. She's clearly not over it. What do you think, Rhonda? So it sounds like she's seeking closure maybe for for the relationship that she didn't get in the past, right? So they haven't been together for a year. I don't think there's anything wrong with seeing them, mm -hmm. but a lot of it depends on the nature of the breakup, right? So if this is someone who was terrible to her and that's why they broke up and um you know it was a horrible situation i don't know that it's a great idea for her to expose herself again in the moment knowing that he's leaving for the military emotions might be running particularly high sometimes the decision making isn't always great under those circumstances so if he's not a good guy then i wouldn't suggest it but if she thinks that she he's a good person if they split up and it was pretty amicable and she just kind of wants to reconnect and see him one last time, I don't think it would be a problem. But she needs to be clear, mm -hmm. like we talked about earlier, in terms of what her boundaries are, um, in terms of what she's expecting from that. And mm -hmm. I think just making sure that she doesn't have um, such high expectations for exactly what this interaction is going to look like. I'd, I'd wonder who reached out to who, did she say? She, she's just saying, should I see him? Should, should, she, she, see make him? An, should she make the effort? Uh, has he reached out? I guess is my question. No. Yeah. Doesn't I don't say so. I don't. Yeah. I don't know about that. Maybe this is all happening in her head. <laughs> it, it, could, it, could, it could be. We do that too. We you do know. that a lot. Yeah. What do you think, Paulina? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's. I mean, if it's just like a one, like want to say hi. I mean, want to say bye to him. That's cool, you know. But what if she hangs on to that thread of hope, and then he's away overseas for all this time, and. She makes up this whole story in her head because like, we tend to do that as mm -hmm. women. Like, he saw me this way. He's in love with me. I'm going to wait for him forever. And then, you know, she's going to get stuck there again. Maybe. And you know when you're away, you know, he, he, may, he may continue on. And then when he comes mm -hmm. back, oh, he's going. Story. He will. He's going to continue yeah. on. So he's going into yeah. the Navy. So yeah. she, 
I, I think I there's nothing wrong. Healthy. I think maybe if it, like you said, to get closure, but like, don't think you're going to start a mm-hmm. relationship no. now. But I mean, if you want to sleep with him as like a goodbye, then fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't get attached. Just don't blame Thank the ass. Don't, don't blame the dating attached. ass. <laughs> don't blame the dating Just apps. Don't do that's it. a good. That's a good way to end the show. Don't blame the dating <laughs> apps. Do listen to the Super Mamas podcast. Thank and thank you so much for being here, Paulina. You can also follow her online at I am Paulina Lopez on Instagram and Twitter. Yes. You're also on the Twitter. Mm-hmm. At it's a different. It's pal- yeah. That it was taken. P A U <laughs> Pau underscore Lopez V. And there's also Super Mamas on Instagram, underscore Super Mamas. Yes. And on Twitter. But awesome. your Instagram is really on point. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Rhonda is also right. online. You're Rhonda Smith, L C S W. And uh, people can also work with you through yep, your practice. Through my website, Rhonda Smith, LCSW.com. And I'm at Rhonda Smith, LCSW across all media platforms. Well, wonderful. Thank you both for being Thank here. You Thank you for having you. me. This was like such a fun show. I learned a lot. I hope you'll come <laughs> back and I'll hope you, I yes. hope you'll bring Bricia next course, time. Yeah. Awesome. And um, yeah, we'll get we'll get more in depth about what it's really like being in a relationship, dating, yep. dating oh for marriage. You know, so we can set you guys up for success. That's it for t- episode 227 of Dates and Mates. I'd love to know what your dating challenge is, which segments are your favorites. Who would you love to hear on a future show? You can email me, Demona at DemonaHoffman.com, or leave us a voicemail, 424-246-6255. Please subscribe to the show. And if you know a friend who could use this information, share this show with them, and Let's spread the love. Let's spread more dates and mates. We'll be back again next week where we're going to dive into the mind of man. We went to the mind of mom. Next we'll go into the mind of man. Can't wait for that one. (laughs) Until then, I wish you happy (laughs) dating.